Hey there folks, welcome back. I just wanted to take a second while I'm getting set up here in the new space to share with you this lick that I've been meaning to show my friend Ken for months now. He asked me about it a long time ago. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll check it out. And then I didn't, and then I didn't, and now I finally am. So I'm sorry for the delay, Ken, but now everyone can enjoy this awesome lick. So this lick actually comes from a really awesome video that Russ Carson posted from IBMA a couple years ago, and Justin Moses played it on a song called Devil in Disguise. So check out this lick in context from that video. So if you couldn't already tell, it's kind of just a fill lick that happens over the G chord or the one chord. Obviously they're in the key of B flat, but we'll just do this all in G. So the way this goes is that the verse of the song just oscillates between G and C for the most part. And then every time it goes back to G, there's kind of this opportunity to play a fill lick. So he plays a couple different ones, but that's obviously one of the more interesting ones that happens during that verse. So basically that verse just goes like this. And that space where there's a long G between parts where you go to the C chord, you can play a lot of different interesting fill licks like this one. So that would fit in this way. By the way, folks, if you're looking for tablature for all the examples in this lesson, then you can head over to patreon.com slash banjo, which is where I post all the tablature for all my lessons and a bunch of other bonus content that you can't find here on YouTube. Beyond that, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to this channel, liking this video, that's a huge thing you can do to help me make more of these videos. So if you do that, I really appreciate it. But beyond that, there's actually other things we can play using these notes to make up our own licks in this style. Because if you hadn't noticed, all of these notes come from the G blues scale, which is kind of like the G pentatonic scale, the G minor pentatonic scale. If that doesn't mean anything to you, that's actually not that big a deal. Knowing what notes are in scales and how they apply to different chords and when you can use them is really helpful. And if you're more interested in music theory, then I do have a series about that. But we don't necessarily need to have a lot of names and words for all of these things in order to get more mileage out of them. The way I like to think about it is, if I just played that lick with all of those notes, then there's a good chance that a different combination of the notes is gonna have a similar but different sound. So you can either call it the G blues scale or you can just call it the notes that are in that lick that sound like that. It's basically the same idea. And you know from context that you can use it over a G chord and it'll give you that kind of bluesy chromatic sound. So if we just take these notes and put them in a different order, then we can make up our own licks that have basically the same effect. And if we're looking for what the effect of this lick is, it fills the space, it has some sort of melodic interest, and then it lands back on G at the end of it. So we can do whatever we want within that context as long as at the end we come back to G. If we do that, then it's gonna have somewhat of the same effect as the original lick.
So all of those variations contain the same notes as the original lick, just in a different order, but they all mostly ended up in the same place. And that's something you can kind of count on when you learn a new lick. These combinations of notes generally are connected to each other, either in the same key or using a certain scale. And even if you don't totally understand that, you can still infer that that combination of notes in a different order might come up with a similar sound or maybe a different sound that you still like. We're really just trying to go from point A to point B for the most part, so as long as you start and end in the right place, everything in between is kind of up in the air. For instance, take this first variation as an example. It starts in the same place, this low D. And I just go up with this ascending pattern. And then I do my hammer-on pull-off. And then I just go back down. Starts and ends in the same place, uses all the same notes, just slightly different order, different number of times that I play each note, but it accomplishes basically the same thing, and it's a variation, so I don't have to play the same lick every single time. Now, this second variation, let's just say I know nothing about music theory or scales. I still was able to extrapolate a little bit from what I already knew just to get a little more out of this selection of notes. I ended up using this third fret on the first string, which is an F, which is not in the original lick, but we do have that note F in the original lick on the fourth string. The way I like to think about that is, if you're not thinking about music theory, any note that you play on the fourth string is fair game on the first string because they're tuned the same, so it's the same note. So if I play F on the fourth string, then I can use F on the first string in some other context. And in this case, I'm just starting from there. So it's not the same note per se, it's a different octave on a different string, but it's gonna have the same effect. And the rest of the lick is the same idea. I'm doing a pull off from two to one in two different places, and it's all kind of with its momentum back to G a couple times. And there's a lot of different ways you can do even that lick, but it's gonna achieve the same thing. Now this last variation also gets a little further away from this original lick, but not with the note choice. This time it's about the rhythm. This part isn't so strange. Sounds good, but everything really happens kind of centered around the downbeat. It's the second half where I end up on that B flat note, which I'm bending a little bit. I end up there just a little earlier than you might expect, so I can hold on to it a little longer. And then when I finally land on G, there's a huge release. And that's really the name of the game with all of these licks is we're just trying to build up some tension with this really interesting material that's happening, but ultimately we're just trying to get back to G. So the more interesting stuff we play, the more satisfying it is when we actually get back to G. So I hope you dug this lick and even the variations, but I would encourage you to make up your own. It can take a little while to get used to that sort of thing, but as long as you know what notes you're working with and how much time you're dealing with, then you can come up with something that works. After a while, it gets easier and easier, and then you start to improvise this stuff. I have a couple licks that I like playing exactly the same way every time, but for the most part, with this kind of thing, I just kind of like to make it up on the spot. And if you're having a hard time with it, just make sure you're listening to music that sounds like the music that you actually want to play. So checking out this video is great, but also the original video where this lick came from and all the players that influenced all the people that play licks like these. I certainly spend a lot of time improvising these kinds of licks, but all the inspiration I get are from players like Justin and players like Ron Stewart and Ron Block and all the players that came before me. So as long as you're checking out those players, you're always going to have some inspiration to make up new ideas for yourself. Beyond that, make sure you check out Patreon if you want the tablature and plenty of bonus content. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, all that stuff. And let me know if you've got other licks that you want me to check out and kind of give this treatment to. If you've got an interesting lick like this one, make sure it's specific, a specific time in a specific video, and maybe I'll check it out and do this sort of thing, come up with some variations and just show you how I work through some of this stuff. But for now, that's gonna do it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.